Is the new tandem OLED display a big enough deal to make the new 13-inch iPad Pro with the M4 chip worth it over the previous M2 iPad Pro model? Well, in this video, we're not only gonna compare the displays, but we're gonna take a look at a bunch of things, including the thickness, the weight, the speakers, the webcam differences with the landscape camera, the performance, and more. Now, the easiest way to tell that you have the new 13-inch model is, of course, the camera bump, which is now basically milled out of that aluminum back, they basically took the same metal enclosure and they milled it down because it is now a lot thinner. Even looking at it from my perspective right here, I can see that it is a lot thinner, definitely more so than the 11 inch versus the previous model. And even though I kind of hated the camera bump, it's starting to grow on me without that ultra wide camera that is now removed, which honestly I never even used anyway, so it kind of looks all right. Now, in terms of the weight, the new M4 iPad Pro 13 inch sheds almost a quarter of a pound, which seems like it's not a big deal, but I could feel it right here, and it really kind of lowers the fatigue feeling. Now, that weight savings really helps when you add in the new redesigned Magic Keyboard, which, by the way, looks amazing with the silver aluminum. The trackpad's bigger, you got function keys, you have a better angle right here, new hinge. We made a full dedicated comparison video between the old Magic Keyboard and the new one, so definitely watch that after this video is over, but I'm really loving this new package, which now feels lighter than before. Now, one of my favorite things about the new iPad Pro is that they finally gave it a landscape camera right here at the top center. So when you're looking at the person that you're talking to with FaceTime, Zoom, whatever, it looks like you're looking directly at them and you're centered like this. And here I am on the old iPad Pro, which is crazy because I'm literally sitting centered with the iPad Pro, but my whole body is shifted to the right side like this. And I'm looking at the display. It looks like I'm not paying attention. It is just so bad compared to the new one. So let me know the microphone differences and camera differences down below. Now, before I get into comparing the new tandem OLED display to the mini LED on the previous iPad Pro, I do wanna talk about the speakers and compare them because the new model is so much thinner, I'm worried there's not enough space for decent speakers. So let's test it out. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think down below, but to me, it almost sounds like the old one is just a little bit louder with more pronounced highs or a better dynamic range of frequencies compared to the new one, which is a little bit dulled down, but still very impressive considering the thickness. Now, one of my favorite things about these huge iPad Pro displays is that it gives you by far the best experience for gaming, like in this game, which is really fun and addictive, and they're doing a huge spring hunt event where new players can win a gaming console and $10,000 of total value of Amazon gift cards alongside their Community Weeks event with multiple in-game activities for all players that also gives you the free legendary Chronicle Adeline. All you gotta do is log in for seven days between April 11th and July 8th. So download Raid Shadow Legends today by using the link in the description or scan the QR code to get these two epic champions, which you can only get by using my link and promo code SPRINGHUNT24. As you can see, I'm level 16, so I've been really enjoying this game, and my name is MaxTechYT, so you can add me and be sure to join my clan named Max Tech Team. Thanks Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And now let's finally get into the display quality comparison. So basically I'm gonna give you a rundown on the technology. The old mini LED display, it's basically like an LCD, but instead of having the whole panel light up with the backlight, it has a bunch of local dimming zones, which means that when you have some areas that are black, they're completely turned off, you get really nice contrast ratios, but the areas that are turned on, those dimming zones are enabled and you might have the issue of the halo effect or blooming, which makes it kind of glow and it's really annoying in some cases, especially with the lights off. Whereas with the new tandem OLED, it's basically two OLED panels stacked on top of each other, which means that it can get very, very bright, basically twice as bright as traditional OLED, but at the same time, when you don't have it fully maxed out, they can run at lower 
amount of power together, which means that there's less power usage, so it becomes a lot more efficient. There's less issues with burn-in. And since each LED controls itself, when it's off, it's completely off. There's no blooming effect whatsoever, and the contrast and the colors get really, really good. Now, the first big advantage of Tandem OLED is that it now supports up to a thousand nits of standard brightness, which means in any apps, doesn't matter what you're watching, doesn't have to be HDR, Watch this as I turn it up. Boom, a thousand nits on the new one compared to 600 on the old one. This is a huge difference even here in our office. But if we take this outside, it gets even better and so much more viewable in the sun, which is a huge benefit for people that go outside a lot. And now playing some HDR video, even though both of these are rated to go up to a thousand nits HDR or peak 1600, for some reason on YouTube playing HDR, it seems like the new one is brighter. Everything about it's better. It's not as kind of dull and gray as I can see on the mini LED version. The clouds are getting a lot brighter. That's very, very interesting. And I'm noticing some sort of haze or like purple fringing in some of the details. I wonder if that's the local dimming that's causing the blooming effect already. So Mini LED is a lot brighter than the previous LCD, but it does have some of those downsides like blooming, whereas OLED, especially Tandem OLED, has basically no downsides at all. You have no blooming, no issues, no burn-in because of the Tandem. It's more efficient. It's crazy bright, the colors pop. It just looks incredible. Yeah, even here in this waterfall shot, it almost looks like there's some weird haze in that waterfall, whereas it's super crisp on the Tandem OLED. This is a world of a difference. I don't know if you guys can tell with the cameras because it's really hard for us to kind of show off the difference. And look at that, especially when it starts getting dimmer, the whole thing is just glowing compared to the new one which looks, oh my gosh, look at that. The little pinpoints are just glowing. It's kind of hilarious on the old mini LED compared to the new one. It is absolutely insane. It is absolutely flawless. And I can't believe that you don't have burn-in issues because of Tandem OLED. It's more efficient. It's just mind blowing. And now we've turned on the lights and it's definitely not that big of a difference, but if you look closely, I can still see some blooming around it. It's probably gonna be impossible to catch on camera, but I can see that the Tandem OLED still looks much better even with the lights on. And then on top of all of those differences, the Tandem OLED gets another big advantage, which is the response time of the display itself. Now, speaking of Apple pencils, even though Apple was able to get the refresh rate or the response time of the Apple Pencil down to nine hertz, the displays themselves previously didn't even get that low. For example, the mini LED has a 39 millisecond response time, but the new Tandem OLED, according to Dave2D, has a five millisecond response time Basically so much, that's about like eight times faster essentially than the previous mini LED. So now, even though these both have the same 120 Hertz ProMotion, the M4 iPad Pro feels and looks smoother, especially when you look at it in slow-mo, you can see how the text is just a lot more sharp as you're moving up and down. And same thing for the Apple Pencils, which the new one supports the Apple Pencil Pro with a bunch of features that we covered in our previous video comparing the 11-inch model, so definitely check out this video. But you do get smoother response time with the new Apple Pencil with Tandem OLED. And now let's jump into performance with Geekbench 6. We have the M2 chip right here that clocks up to about 3.49 gigahertz compared to the M4 chip that goes up to 4.4. So let's run the CPU benchmark. We got our scores back and it looks like we have 2610 for the M2 chip and 3797 for the M4 chip. That's about 45% faster in single core, which is basically gonna make your whole system a lot more snappy. And then in multi-core, we have 13,300 compared to 10,045. So that's about 32% faster. So that's gonna help with productivity and other workflows in including gaming as well. So let's go ahead and run a web browser based speed test called Speedometer 3.0. All right, we got our scores back. 32.6 runs per minute for the M4 and 25 
for the M2. That's about 30% faster, so web browsing is gonna feel more snappy. And now finally, I do wanna test gaming performance using 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, which is basically a 20 minute stress test to see if this new thinner chassis is going to thermal throttle more or if Apple was able to fix it. And holy moly guys, this is crazy. Apple was right when they said that they improved the thermals because the best loop score is 29% faster in this test, but when you look at the lowest loop score, which factors in the thermal throttling, it's 38% faster. That means your minimum FPS in gaming is gonna be 38% better. That's actually insane, because if you look at this chart, you can see that the old M2 chip iPad Pro, it came down with the second loop, and then it stayed pretty even until we got to the 10th loop, basically 10 minutes in, and it started to throttle lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. But check this out right here. With the second loop, it came down and it was literally flat for the entire 20 minutes. Basically no huge thermal throttling issues. This is actually very impressive and it makes me very excited for gaming. And I almost forgot to mention guys with all the scores that I just did and all the tests, this is the nine core version. This is not even the new 10 core M4. The nine core is beating out the M2 by that much in all of these tests. It gets even better with the 10 core, which we've already done a full video comparing the nine and 10. Definitely watch that video. And in the 11 inch version of this video, we did a lot more real world testing as well. So definitely check that out as well. And now with all that said and tested, let's get into my conclusion on if the tandem OLED is good enough to make it worth buying the new 13 inch M4 iPad Pro. Well, first of all, as I'm holding them into my hands, man, the lightweightness of this just feels so nice. Probably gonna be amazing for gaming, so that's something to factor in if you like to game a lot. But I do wanna say that if you already spent a ton of money on the mini LED version of the iPad Pro, it probably is not worth upgrading because you're spending a ton of money again, unless you watch a lot of movies and the mini LED blooming is really annoying you, then maybe it's worth upgrading to the new tandem OLED. But if not, it's probably safe to keep this. Or if you don't have an iPad Pro yet, or if you have an older LCD only iPad Pro, the tandem OLED is finally good enough to have a solid upgrade. Even if you have the 2018 model, the 2020 or the 2021 LCD 11 inch, Finally, a killer upgrade with Tandem OLED that makes everything feel more smooth. Everything feels amazing. It looks amazing. The performance is great. You got the Apple Pencil Pro. You have the new updated Magic Keyboard. I would say it's a killer upgrade after all of these years. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, let me know down in the comment section below, and don't forget to use the Raid Shadow link in the description below to get those exclusive new characters as legendaries, and if you enjoyed this video, check out one of those two videos right over there that I mentioned earlier. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.